Skip Ounce, Dean of the School of Business. Welcome today to One Million Cups of Brunswick. One Million Cups is an educational program established by the uh, Kaufman Foundation of uh, Kansas City. Its purpose is to engage, encourage, and support entrepreneurs and to help create a, a network of entrepreneurs and to encourage a group of supporters to come and uh, listen to their stories. We will have a couple of presenters present today. I'll allow you all to ask questions. Uh, we'll take a quick break and you can all can have some coffee and, have, and we'll, have, we'll have a second entrepreneur. Our goal is very simple, to have creative people talk to other creative people in hopes that this conversation will encourage and support others to become entrepreneurial as well. Um, I give you a number every month. 195 other cities are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time today. So we're glad they all caught up with us. Um, as uh, usual, our host is Susan Bates. Oh. We are still the only bar that does this. <laughs> Others have educational classrooms that are cold and academic, which was where I exist, so uh, once a month I'm cool, I, I hope. Um, you're cool every day, Skip. Oh, uh, you're, you're kind. I'll leave you a tip. Um, please go to our Facebook page if you're interested. Like us, follow us, spread the word. Thank you all for those who do that. If you don't do Facebook, I understand. Um, there's a pad, and I can bother you if you leave your email address. Or if you want to leave a, a, a business card, that'd be great. New folks today, please. Good, good, good. This is great. Thank you all. Please make friends. If you don't have any friends, I'm sorry. We'll make some for you. Also, um, Bill uh, Garland over here in the corner, who's not looking at me, had, had been on my faculty for years, was reassigned to our Camden campus to help bring it back to life. And he was asked to go down there for six months. After three and a half years, he has now returned, having fixed, not fixed, having brought life back to the campus, given the goal and purpose. Bill is rejoining the, uh, the business faculty as director of business innovation, will be responsible for our social media presence on one million cups, and what I'm hoping today is that we now can start to live stream to Facebook. Is that right? Do I say that correctly? Because uh, he gave me these words, I'm, I don't have no clue what he's trying to do. So. But I'm glad you're here, glad Bill's back, and our first presenter is uh, Rachel Berg of the Sandbox SSI and Sandbox Consulting Group. <coughs> Consulting Group works with executives, leaders, and microphones. There we go. We work with executive leaders and visionaries like yourself to unlock talent, unblock people gridlock, and ramp up results. So they asked me today. Right, taking it off and pretend like I'm a singer. Um, <laughs> um, they asked me to come today, like they do all of us, to kind of tell you the story, the path that I took to get to here. So it all started in seventh grade. So in seventh grade, the little boys would call and say, what do I say to little girls? And the little girls would call and say, what do I say to little boys? So in seventh grade, I began giving advice with no any kind of degree or authority whatsoever, I began giving advice on communication. <laughs> also in seventh grade, I discovered lipstick. And I discovered that if I was gonna pay for lipstick, I might as well sell lipstick so it would be free. 
So I started an Avon business in seventh grade. So I've been an entrepreneur since seventh grade. I've been chatting with people about communication skills since seventh grade. It's been a long time. As I wandered through my path, I discovered a kind of formula for getting really great results. And the first thing is to find that talent. And most of us have a talent deep down here that really did show up in about seventh grade. It's something that you can't stop doing. If you have a few minutes, it's what you're doing. If you should be doing something else, it's what you're doing. So this is a little freebie tip for you as you look at your business, you look at your talents, find out what is it that you can't stop doing. And for me, what I couldn't stop doing was helping people communicate. The second piece that all of my clients find as they have a brand new idea is they, ran, they tend to run slap in to the court of public opinion. How many people in the room today are the really strange ones in their family? The crazy ones, the ones with the ideas, those people. <laughs> exactly, we are the crazy ones. The court of public opinion can be daunting and it can stop what you're wanting to do. I spent a lifetime trying to figure out how to convince the court of my public opinion. I was married to a rocket scientist engineer from Georgia Tech. And his sister, the attorney from Emory, and her husband, the CEO, international CEO, also attorney, was my court of public opinion. They thought I was a little strange. I kept reading lots and lots of these personal growth and development things. They thought I had a self-esteem problem. What I was really doing was the very beginning part of what became the coaching industry. But at first I was just ferociously reading all the self-help stuff and they were very concerned. They wanted me to get a real job. So I decided I would get certifications so people would at least take me seriously. So I'm a certified coach. I'm certified in leadership development, etc. My next court of opinion, I have eight minutes, right? So I need to stop saying. Good? Okay, I'll watch. <laughs> so the second time I ran into a court of public opinion was once I got my all my badges, all my things that were going to make me respectable, um, I went and got my big corporate job. So I started working with the top HR consulting firm in Atlanta. And I had a boss, six foot three, tall guy, who came from mili military background. He literally was in intelligence in Vietnam. Then he went into corporate and was trained by PepsiCo, which is where everyone who was anyone was trained in HR during the day, PepsiCo. So as he and I started bringing me in, we started talking about what it was that we were going to do. We decided we would do leadership development. The problem is his version of leadership was top down. I'll tell you when it's time for you to move kind of old-fashioned, that's how the things are done. And mine was more collaborative. Literally, every single time I used the word collaboration, the man rolled his eyes. Like, rolled his eyes. We were sitting at a table where I was training all of the consultants on this new concept of collaborative leadership and how to groom leaders to be able to lead collaboration. And he sat like a teenage boy with his notes underneath the table, writing notes about not what I was talking about, but for his radio show. So clearly we were not aligned on that whole vision. The next piece was I left, and I did what a lot of people, how many people in this room have started their own business? It's pretty terrifying, right? You step out, I'm going to do it. So I started my first business, and thank goodness I got a gig with a visionary, unlike my previous boss, who was pretty much, let's do it the way it's always been done, kind of dude. And by the way, I believe in chain of command. I have to teach the millennials all the time about the chain of command. But collaboration is also important. So this visionary brought his leadership team, half of them from the north, half from the south, and we were trying to bring them together. We know how well that works, right? Bringing the north and south together. But we did it, and we were able to work with his leadership team work with all of his manufacturing sites globally. We were able to get such good engagement scores from the Gallup organization that he was asked to come and speak at an HR conference to talk about his secrets. 
And it was in that moment, and I tell you this not to pat myself on the back, but it was in that moment that I realized I do know what I'm talking about, and I'm just a visionary. I see things before other people. So basically, we were able to get phenomenal results. So the things that we, my little path showed me was that there is a, a formula, a secret formula. First you find your talent. Then you go up against the court of public opinion. You engage them, enroll them, and you actually prove to somebody you can do it. So just to finish up, I'm gonna tell you that how I got here was unfortunately my late husband was going to one of these retreats where you do team building and his um, a blood clot dislodged. He went, sat and had beers with his, his sales buddy, went to sleep, never got up. So suddenly, um, the summer before my youngest senior year in high school, the world changed completely. So from that, I really decided I'm going to do what I want to do, where I want to do it. So of course, I decided I would move to the beach. I looked a little bit um, at Wilmington, and I looked at St. Simon's. And since all the hurricanes were going to Wilmington, I decided to move to St. Simon's. And you all know what happened, too, too, since I moved here. <laughs> so I have set up a retreat location on St. Simon's. It's in that cute little gray Victorian right, right across the street from um, Mullet Bay, right next to Parker's. And we have a fabulous place where you can bring your teams. You can come individually as an entrepreneur. We've got huge whiteboards. I know your mother said don't write on the whiteboard. We have whiteboards all over the wall. We work with people to find their talent, to enroll their public, and to create results. Thank you very much. Come play in the sandbox soon. Okay. All right. Good, good. So then we learn one thing that you have attracted hurricanes here. Right, it's my fault. <laughs> Who is your primary uh, competition? My competition? In Atlanta or down here? Uh, you choose. Um, in Atlanta, actually my late boss um, was my competition. Um, he, he had been in the industry for 30 years. So we worked with Chick-fil-A, and we worked with Zep, and we worked with Weather Channel, and Spanx, and big, big corporations. So when I said goodbye to him, um, he was actually competing with me around leadership development. Good, thank you. Questions? Questions? What about locally? How, about, how about locally? Locally. Do y'all have anybody that y'all are aware of that actually does leadership development? Yeah. Skip. I wasn't going to tell you this, but uh, <laughs> I know you. I, I knew you do it. I knew you did it like in the, the academic setting. I'm, I'm do you a, also consult? Well, I do lots of things. Uh, Bill probably does that. And, awesome. Uh, well, here's what I learned from my mother a long time ago. My mom was a realtor, and yes, I'm a recovering realtor. Before I went into consulting, I was a real estate agent. And she sat down at the table with me and other competitors. And at the time, we were with Bucket Brokers, and Harry Norman was our competitor. And she said, Rachel, the real estate agent across the table from you is not your competition. She, they're your colleague. They have houses for your buyers to, to, to purchase. And they have buyers for your houses. So when I was in my early 20s, my mother taught me a long time ago that competitors are simply colleagues because you can't possibly solve everybody's problems. And I'm always leaning. So gentlemen, I'll be calling you. Right. Actually, Danielle Sutterhouse, she also does it, and she's in the same Well, we need to meet each other. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, Rachel. Hello? Okay. Rachel, how do you see the difference between the market in Atlanta and then bringing your skills and your talents down here? It's interesting. Um, first of all, I, I, I just want to say that I can't do any of this without a team, and my team member, Amy Frenchman, is in the back of the room, and I just want everybody to say good morning to her. And is Lena Marino in here? No, my other, another teammate, Lena Marino, is my marketing guru. Um, so how do I find the two markets? It's interesting because Amy and I were calling a, a longtime friend of hers, and we were talking about um, what we were doing and how to position ourselves here and that kind of thing. And, and she goes, actually, Rachel, up here, leadership development is completely saturated. 
So I went from an industry literally nobody knew about. Coaching was a brand new industry when I started. Consulting had been around forever, but coaching was new. To now there's a saturation of leadership development coaching in Atlanta. She said, what's actually in your favor is that you're at the beach and that people are wanting to do the retreat experience. In 2008, all of the off-sites just like crashed. The, the economy crashed, et cetera, but we're coming back. So now companies are beginning to say, okay, we do need to take our teams off, off campus. So I think we have competitive advantage down here. Uh, meeting space is going to run just about like the, you know, I'm competitive with everybody else as far as how much per hour and that kind of thing. Um, how I charge, it's interesting, Amy and I are working on this right now. We're working with a client that we, it's from here, not Atlanta, um, who owns 10 Little Caesar restaurants. And they're getting ready to expand to 20. And in order to do that, they have got to standardize not only the tasks, they have a tool for that called Caesar Vision, but they also need to engage all the people in using Caesar Vision. And we have got a portal for HR for that kind of thing to be able to do that. And so as we talk to them about how much they spent to make sure that all the tasks in their business was automated and people knew how to do it, they spent about $10,000 a store to do that. And we were talking about how much would you spend to make sure the people actually did the, the tasks actually did it well and they played nice in the sandbox and we were quoting something like two thousand dollars a, a, a store so that's just a real recent example okay another question please all right well thank you very much Rachel. absolutely appreciate absolutely. it it's nice to meet you good, good, good. To prove you were here, here's some corporate swag that we give everybody. It is a uh, collectible. I've only seen it in seven garage sales. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a lot.